Welcome again to It Doesn't Take a Genius, conversation with introspective perspectives and pithy points of view. Here are your hosts, my friends, Max and Marty. I think that's Mark and Mike. Yeah, whatever. Ramsey! Marshall, welcome to my fireside chat. Yes, you, it's, you get this, uh, oh brother, where art thou tone to the whole thing. Everything's this, this light brown color. And, and it's a wonder that anyone can, that I can tell because uh, I've got a cold, might sound a little stuffy. And so I've been drinking cough syrup all day. <laughs> so I'm kind of just excited to hear what actually comes out of this. <laughs> if you hear Dr. Ralph Stanley singing, oh, death, like it, that's a sign. You need to, <laughs> you know, be careful. That's all I'm saying. Oh yeah. No, no, no. We're going to, we're going to talk into this can and they're going to pay us. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, that's that's a pretty good set of uh, Oh Brother, Where Art Thou references that I was not prepared for when you press the record button. Um, <laughs> At this point, we're mass communicating. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, I'm going to get us back on track, Mike. Movie. Yeah, all right, I'll stop. <laughs> but, uh, all right, what are we talking about today? I believe well, you have been mulling over some things that, you know, you and I have both faced uh, throughout our career and helping people learn to coach. And I, I think you have very wisely pointed out that these are three things that um, really you have to have or for, for your coaching efforts to succeed. You know, three things you have to have for your coaching efforts to succeed. And uh, you, you've sort of distilled this down and, and sort of uh, are, are developing, putting it in writing. So um, we've got a three-part series about some elements that you and I have addressed and you've uncovered. Right. Well, I think so, so many times we jump right into the coaching or we encourage the manager to jump right into the coaching. And there's some things that if they aren't present, uh, the effort is most likely to fail or fall short. Mm. And these are things that we don't talk about because, well, as you hear the list, all right, we're going to talk about trust, yeah. we're going to talk about caring, and we're going to talk about commitment. Yeah. And these are, it's just not any fun to talk about. I'd much rather talk about how often we're going to coach, how long, what are some great questions I can ask, right, all, right, all those things. Uh, but without these three elements, it, it's, it's, it's definitely going to, going to be less than successful. Um, yeah. So let's let's talk about number one, trust. Yes. A and so the one of the, the key questions uh, on a survey that we used to do uh, for employee feedback was, I trust my manager. Mm -hmm. And and when that question was answered poorly uh, by the team members, yeah, it was just symptomatic of so many other things that were difficult uh, for that department. Yeah. And the flip side was also true. The, the rest of the survey scores could be abysmal and that would be a high score. And basically that was your people saying, look, he, he's got some things that we really need him to change, but we love the guy. We, we want this to work. We, we believe that he can. Um, and, uh, and it was a tremendous foundation to build on. And that's what it is, right? Trust is always the foundation of so many things, you know, so many relationships. So, so that's where we are here. Oh, definitely. Well, in, in, uh, in uh, Covey's book on trust, uh, the speed of trust, I think it was called, uh, yep. he talked about the trust tax and the trust dividend. Yeah. And the trust tax was what we saw when trust was low. Everything that that manager wanted to do in that department was immensely more difficult. It right. took more time. It took more money. It took more convincing. Everything was met with suspicion and resistance. Yep. If trust was high, you got a trust dividend. Even if your idea wasn't all that good, yeah. your advice maybe wasn't all that sound, they trusted you and they acted upon it. I don't understand this, but I'm sure he had good intentions. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 he wouldn't do anything to hurt us, so let's try it. Yeah, yeah. And, well, and, and think about like, you know, you were talking about um, the, the trust tax. Uh, this is an example I bring up with my stores and my clients. Um, you know, if, if you've flown on a plane since 9-11, you know, two things are true about you. You have arrived at an airport way earlier than you wanted to, and you've let a stranger look at you practically naked. You know, that, that happens every time. And, and why would we allow such indignity and, and such time wasting and taxpayer dollars and so on and so forth 
It's because we don't trust that the guy sitting next to us on the plane isn't going to blow us up. That's the trust tax. That's, you know, we do not trust each other in that scenario. So we pay all of that time and money and resources and dignity, frankly. Uh, and, and so there's the macro scale. The micro scale is, you know, if you haven't spent time to build the trust with your employee, get ready for that person to sort of be second guessing everything you say and uh, wondering where you're coming at and what you're trying to accomplish. What's, what's his hidden agenda? You know, things like that come up to us privately after a manager who doesn't have the trust built tries to do some coaching. Yeah, yeah, you, you get the, the appearance of these three people, the victim, right? He's doing this just to pick on me, the right. critic, right? I'm going to pick apart this idea because I don't trust him, and right. the bystander. Just going to stand here. I don't know what he's up to. I'm going to wait for this to pass, do what everybody else does. None of those three people help you get to your goals. Right. <laughs> None of those people are good for you. That's very well said. So let's talk about uh, the, there's a list, right? So trust is this huge nebulous idea. Right. Uh, so we found this list. Uh, I, it, it, it became crystal clear to me when reading the Trusted Advisor, uh, just a, a wonderful book. And it talks about four things, competence, reliability, credibility, and care. Right. So we'll dive into the first one, competence, right? The way they define it is we know how to do what we said we will do. Right. So, it, it's it's like a, uh, a an MD on the wall of a doctor's office, you know. I and, and in fact, I'm going through this. I I uh, my, my doctor retired, and so I'm in the process of shopping for a doctor. And uh, you know, I'm from Berea, Kentucky. Um, it is the hippie capital of Kentucky, and I think uh, I could find just about every different kind of healer, energy uh, field person, aura, etc. That I want to. But I have decided, you know, what I really uh, am looking for is someone who can medically heal me, someone who can do the work. Um, and the MD, that diploma is kind of my sign. They have been to medical school. They know uh, what, what to do to, to take care of me. Um, so, so that's what I'm, I'm looking for. You know, I'm looking for a certified technician to take care of my vehicle. Uh, that's one way to, to, to demonstrate that competence. Well, and I, and I, and this raises, you raise a, this wonderful point of, and I run into managers that, that are sometimes they lack confidence because they don't know how to do everybody's job that's on their team. Mm -hmm. And so they, they have, they have specialists and I, they haven't done all the jobs. They don't know how to do everyone else's job. Right. And that's okay. That's not what this says. This says, we know how to do what we said we will do. Right. So the, the, the parts that I'm in charge of, when I say I'm going to hold a meeting, I know how to hold a meeting. When I'm going to have a coaching intervention, I know how to have a coaching intervention. Yep. If I'm going to take something and try to get it passed through corporate, I know how to navigate corporate. Yeah. Uh, and so those are the things that you need to, to, you don't have to know everybody's job and, and have to be able to do it better than everybody else on your team. Uh, but the part that you're entrusted with, you, you better know how to do it. And that really leads to part two here, right? That the reliability, that the idea that we follow through on what we say we will do. So, you know, we do know how to do it. And not only do we know how to do it, um, we actually do it. Uh, that, that's, that's sort of where that's going. You know, you, if you said it, you actually follow through and, and make that happen. So, you know, I, I do look for an MD right now. And guess what? I've also asked around and said, is, is he a good doctor? Like, I know he's been to med school, but like, does he have a decent, uh, you know, diagnosis uh, uh, rate? You know, is he is he good at healing people? Um, it's not, it you know, it's not always life or death like that. It could be, you know, you know, like like with a with a service department. You know, okay, they're certified technicians, but how's their comeback rate? How many people come back in for the same issue? Now they didn't follow through and do what they said they did. Excellent points. And when you think of reliability. Um, we know that human beings are not infallible. Right. And so there is going to be times where you commit to something and you're unable to do it. Mm -hmm. and, and what we've seen, it's been our experience that the great leaders just own it. I know right. I said that we would gather together and talk about this on Wednesday. Things came up, the whirlwind swept us up. I was pulled away. 
and we didn't get to have that meeting. However, I apologize, and here's when we're going to reschedule. Yeah. That's perfectly yeah. acceptable. Nobody expects you to be perfect. They just expect you to either do what you said you were going to do or own it when it doesn't happen and make amends. Okay, so you, you're really stepping us nicely through this because, you know, there's competent, there's reliable, you know, can you do it? Will you do it? And now you're you're actually sort of tiptoeing into the third area, credibility, because, hey, if we don't follow through, do we have the words and the actions to back that up? So it's it's our words and our actions matching, even when there's a problem, right? Even when we have to own up to something where the action wasn't exactly what we hoped for. Yeah, you would. Yeah, the people are looking for that. Uh, what do they call it in psycho psychological terms, like dissonance? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Is there is there is there a difference between what he says and what he does? You know, right. we want. You know, I've is I aspire that we have the most professional organization on the planet, and yet I'm doing unprofessional behaviors. Yeah. And yeah. this is a uh, to me. This goes back to to the uh, the old saying. Uh, you know, that uh, that joke that you hear. Yeah. Don't 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 do what I do do what I say. Right. <laughs> it's like, right. no, that doesn't, it doesn't work. Yeah. Right? And we, we know from a vocalization and from an impact standpoint that the, the behaviors matter much more than the words. Yeah. So if you say you're going to do something and you don't, or you do something else, what the something else now takes precedence, right? I don't believe what yeah. you say anymore. And, and isn't this good news? If you're listening to this and have been trying to, you know, do more coaching, try out coaching, and you're hearing this saying that, oh, I've got to be credible. Oh, crap. Well, no, it says you have to be credible. It doesn't say you have to be perfect. It, it says that it's really important that those uh, those words and actions match, even on these things where, you know, it, it didn't go so well. You, you sort of own up to that and say, that didn't go so well. Uh, and we've talked about this on the podcast before. You know, there have been times where I sort of raise my hand in the middle of a meeting and say, this isn't connecting with you guys, is it? Whatever I'm doing is not working. Uh, apologies. So am I right about that? Yeah. Okay. Well, let's let's figure out what would work. I build more trust in the room by doing that than I would if I had not had any problems to begin with. Oh, yeah. Yeah. To continue to push through something that isn't working. Uh, you know, yeah. It goes back to, yeah, just own it. Yeah. And, and if, if, if I say it, then I'm going to do my absolute very best to do it. And if I fall short, I'm going to own it. Right. And there again, it's, we're not expecting perfection, uh, but right. we, we are expecting authenticity and ownership uh, yeah. when it doesn't go well. And, now, and Mike, you're right. People lean into that. People are, they, they do. That. They, they give you so much uh, uh, goodwill to pour out. You know, they, they, they basically are saying, We'll, we'll accept this. It's totally fine. We're going to help you. Um, so I, I'm sorry, I, I stepped on your words there, but I, I'm just excited about the idea. Um, I, I learned about this from the Thin Book of Trust. Um, and it's a, it's a very similar list to this one. Um, and they make the point that competence and reliability are rational things, right? Like, like back to my doctor example, I can have a, a scoreboard that I find on the internet, a report card that grades hospitals and doctor's offices. And, you know, can they heal me? Will they heal me? You know, that, that's all measured by surveys and fatality rates and, you know, all sorts of crazy things like that. It's rational. Credibility gets into this weird emotional area where it's like somehow I just look at your actions and I, I couldn't measure it, but I just kind of know based on your actions you know, there's something there that made you authentic or credible. And then there's one final element to this, which we're going to frankly do episode two in this series just on this one, and that's care. And so one last bit on this doctor's office example that I used, you know, we have a phrase for this, right? There's, there's the MD, there's the MD who's good enough that he has, you know, good statistics about healing people. And then you get down to this area where it, we, we call it a bedside manner, right? And I, I can't put that in a chart necessarily. I can't just tell you scientifically what bedside manner looks like, but there are some things you can demonstrate that accomplish being not just credible, but being caring. So I don't know where caring goes for you, but in my head, that's what I always think of is, is somebody who cares enough to take time to have that good bedside manner, quote unquote. Right. Well, and part of that is is 
you know, the, the elements of bedside manner that, that you're describing would be engagement, uh-huh. uh, would be listening, yep. would, be, would be time. So, yeah. the, so the doctor is the busiest person on the planet. He's got patients stacked up from here to, uh, to the moon, and yet he's spending quality time. He or she is spending quality time with you. Yep. That's, that, those are elements of care. The, the, those are behaviors that will communicate care. Right. And, I, and I like what uh, I like this definition uh, that we pulled from the trusted advisor. And it says care through our words and actions. Uh, we demonstrate we care about the employee at least as much as we care about ourselves. Yeah. So so we're not looking for martyrs. <laughs> right? Right. You don't have to, to give your life. Right. But right. I do have to. My perception has to be that I believe you care about as much about me as you do yourself. Right. The, the example, uh, and I, we may have talked about this on the podcast too, but uh, Saturn, the car company, when they started, you know, the, the brand became so well known as a caring brand. And it's because they jacked up their, their first launch, you know, their first product launch. Uh, I can't remember if it was a coolant issue or something, but, you know, they, they, they had uh, a ton of vehicles that uh, needed uh, basically new engines. It was, it was something that extreme they replaced the cars. You know, they just basically said, this is, this is too big a deal. These are, you know, our first round of customers who have taken a chance on this brand and this new product. We've got to take care of them and raving fans overnight. And in fact, that's, that's what uh, the uh, Ellen sitcom, <laughs> I, I can't remember if it was the Jupiter or the sat, uh, the, uh, I think it was Jupiter. They had a pretend car company that one of the characters on the sitcom uh, you know, went to this, let's say Jupiter dealership and, uh, essentially joined a cult. Like, like by the end of the episode, you realize that, that she's such a fan of this car company. She has joined the cult of this car company. And that's how we kind of want it in a way for brands, right? We want cult-like following for Apple and things. And, and how about that kind of following for you and in your coaching? You know, what if somebody was so open to your, input in in a, a coaching relationship uh that that's that's where you're going to get the growth for that person right they're they're that coachable starts with care oh yeah and i've heard uh i've heard managers say that their team would pass the iowa test and i'm like what's the iowa test and they're mm -hmm. like if i got transferred to iowa and they Ooh. said i could take my team with me my team would go with me yeah yeah. You know, and that's that's how much they know they 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 trust me. They know I care, and, and they would follow me no matter where the next assignment took us. Yeah, that's. And I don't know why they pick on Iowa, uh, but <laughs> apparently they think it's the middle of nowhere, which we all know it's just next to the middle of nowhere. So I was I was uh, just to to transition a little bit uh, back. You know, what did they do? to build that trust, right? It's, it's like you said, you know, there was time spent, there are all these things that were done. And, and the kicker to all of this, this is, this is what I always talk about when I uh, go through these four elements with, uh, with a client, is it's not so much that you have these things. That's not enough. They have to be demonstrated. So you can be the most competent, reliable, credible, caring person on the planet. But if the people around you have never seen those things demonstrated in your interactions, you don't get credit for it. So, so an example of that, um, I was meeting with a, a bunch of service technicians and I, I said, you know, what would demonstrate care um, in uh, say the delivery of a car back to a customer? And, you know, there was sort of silence for a minute and then they start elbowing one of the larger gentlemen and said, uh, you know, uh, keeping so-and-so's uh, greasy fingerprints off the steering wheel. And everybody, you know, kind of laughed. And But we, we talked about it. No, <laughs> that wouldn't demonstrate care because the customer is expecting that the car will be delivered with a, you know, a, a clean steering wheel. So what would demonstrate trust? Ah, well, you know, what we're going to have to do is pull the car into the lane when it's time for that customer to pick it up and step out of the car with a cloth and wipe down the steering wheel in front of the customer so they know that we took that effort. Is that a little bit of showbiz and theater? Yeah, but 
what's the purpose of that? It's to make sure, you know, we slow down enough to take care of you and we want you to feel taken care of. It's because it's demonstrated. Right. It reminds me of the, the concept of no anonymous giving. If you're going to oh. do nice for somebody, you're going to demonstrate care. Yeah. Make sure they know about it. Right. There, yeah. There's no harm in, in, in getting the goodwill back. Uh, oh, that's interesting. Especially as a manager. So, yeah. uh, you know, whether you're serving a customer or a, or a team member. Yeah. I think that one of the, the last things that we'll talk about here is is perception. Mm -hmm. And so so I may believe that I'm competent, reliable, credible and that I care. Uh, but it's a it's a perception. And so mm -hmm. so your 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 reliability could be damaged just by miscommunication. Gotcha. So if I say, <laughs> I'll get back with you later this week and we'll we'll have a follow up to this conversation. Yeah. What the heck is later this week? So Thursday rolls around. I'm already questioning your commitment. And you're thinking <laughs> Friday, Saturday is is the end of the week. Right. 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 We'll talk about this tomorrow afternoon. Right. Well, it's one o'clock. I bet he forgot. Yep. <laughs> you, know? Yep. Like, you know, so so sometimes we're doing the right thing, but the way we communicate it created questions in the mind. So making sure that you're clear about what it is you can and can't do and, and when and how you will do it uh, so that there's no question. Right. There's there's no question uh, that, right. that, that raises in my mind uh, that begins to to erode the trust that I have built up. Yeah, and, and that's, a, that's a good word to end on. All of this coaching is about getting clarity, right? So having clarity about the agreement you have on dealing with some of these elements that build trust, uh, you know, when you're going to do your coaching session, uh, that, that kind of clarity is, is really what we're after in all things. So um, we hope that this series helps the listener to develop some foundational things that lead to those clarity-inducing moments. Excellent. Excellent. Yep. Yeah. And uh, next episode, we're going to dive into uh, a whole lot deeper into care. And uh, we've got uh, we've got one question that, that we'd like to leave you with, which is, you know, everybody talks about what they want from their people. Mm -hmm. Right. What do I need from my people? I need them to do this. I need them to do that. I need them to do this. When it comes to care, we want to we want to ask a different question. That is that question is, what do you want for your people? Right. And so put some thought into that. And then uh, and then we'll see you next week uh, with uh, with our next episode. And we'll dive a little bit deeper into that concept. Lovely. This has been so heartwarming <laughs> and wonderful that I bet even our announcer has has warmed up to us. Oh, did he record new ones? Oh, oh, it's a joke. I'm sorry. <laughs> Sarcasm. <laughs> so go ahead and tweet that or share it any other way you want. As always, there are no rights reserved, no trademarks, no copyrights. Share it if you want to. And join us next time on It Doesn't Take a Genius.